Today I want to share with you something that's very close to my heart. Um, I know most of us have heard of MRSA, but have you ever heard of Clostridium difficile? It goes by the more common name, C. diff. You know, I never heard of it until last week, and that was because of a family member. My brother was hospitalized around Easter with a bad case of pneumonia. He came home and started getting better, but yet, you know, he wasn't eating that much, had a low-grade fever, just wasn't himself, tired a lot. Well then, last Sunday, he developed a really, really bad case of diarrhea all night long. My sister-in-law got scared. She took him to the ER and they admitted him immediately. So from Monday to Friday, he was in the hospital. And on Friday, he died. My brother came down with the C. diff infection. And I had never heard of it before, and I wanted to share it with you in case a loved one got it, or even you yourself, so you knew what the symptoms were and what you can do to prevent it. Because I hate to have this happen to anyone. So, what really is C. diff? It's a bacteria, and it's kind of classified as a bad bacteria that can reside in your gut or you can get it. And what happens often is people take antibiotics for a legitimate reason and that kills off all your bacteria in your gut, not just the bad bacteria. And what happens is then C. diff might have a chance to grow faster and kind of take over your gut. And that can be very, very bad. And I guess C. diff also exists in the environment, in soil, in animal feces, etc. So what are the symptoms? Well, one of the primary symptoms is loose stools or diarrhea. You can have a low-grade fever, although often that is not present. Um, abdominal pain is a sensitivity to the touch in an area of your abdomen. You could have bloody stools, although that often is not a symptom. And you might have nausea and loss of appetite. And if you have been on an antibiotic or are on an antibiotic and have more than three loose stools in a day, you should call your doctor to be tested for C. diff. Um, it's done by a stool sample and depending on the results, because sometimes you get a positive result and it just means that you're uh, really a carrier for C. diff. It has a colony <laughs> inside you, but that doesn't mean that it's causing problems. So they may do further tests like a CAT scan. One more very important thing. Don't take anti-diarrhea medicine if you think you might have C. diff. Because guess what? That can actually make the problem worse. So for many people that have C. diff, they might not even know it. They just get better. You know, think, oh, I had a little bout of food poisoning. Um, for others, if you're on an antibiotic, the doctor might say, stop taking the antibiotic, and you actually, your diarrhea gets better, and your symptoms go away. Or, if it gets worse, they might give you an oral antibiotic to take. Yep, you combat what the antibiotic did the first time with another antibiotic. But for some, that is not enough, and you can end up hospitalized. You can develop a blockage in your colon, which is very painful. Yes, it stops your diarrhea, but it leads to, it could be like what you call a uh, exploding colon, where actually the fecal matter goes into your system and you become step septus, and that is very, very dangerous. And in the latter case there, I'm talking about some patients who get fulminant colitis. Um, that's only a 1 to 3% of the cases, but unfortunately that was the case of my brother. Um, along with a blockage, he also had severe tachycardia, and so his heart was racing. And what he eventually died from was a heart attack. Um, but really that's just a complication from the C. diff infection. So according to the CDC, at least a half a million people per year in the U.S. suffer from a C. diff infection. And of those half a million, 29,000 die. 
within less than 30 days of being diagnosed. So who's at risk for developing a C. diff infection? Well, we used to think it was just those that had sought uh, you know, medical treatment, um, they had been in a nursing home or in the hospital, and that's where they got their infection. And often that is the case. However, um, now 25% of the cases identified have been just at the community at large. They were not in a nursing home, they were not in a hospital, they were not over the age of 65. So there is a more virulent strain of C. diff that has developed that is very resistant to just about any antibiotic. And it seems that those that have caught C. diff at the community at large um, are more susceptible to the severe symptoms for C. diff and even death. So it is not just an old person's disease anymore. It can happen at any age. Now what you have to know is C. diff is highly, highly contagious. It can live on a surface like your cell phone, um, your shopping cart, you know, where you push it, uh, any type of surface for up to five months. That's right, five months. And they're like spores that spread wherever in a room. So you have to be very, very careful if you know of someone that has C. diff so you don't end up getting it yourself or giving it to somebody else. Um, the way you would generally yourself get the infection is if you touch something like the person or like their bed rail, whatever, and then sometime touch your face, your mouth, and it gets inside your body. So what do you do if you know someone has a C. diff infection? You wash your hands a lot. And I mean wash them properly with soap and water. That's your first line of defense. You should be doing that anyway before you eat, after you eat, uh, before you use the, excuse me, after you use the restroom. Um, anyway, wash your hands well. So if you know of someone that has C. diff, you need to clean any area they've been in very, very well. Um, you need to use something uh, with chlorine. So bleach is a great alternative. And you might want to check into something like, these are the Clorox Healthcare germicidal wipes. And they are I don't know if you call it certified, whatever, by the EPA to kill C. diff after only three minutes. Might not be a bad thing just to keep in your preps because those wipes can kill a lot of other things too. I should mention that using the alcohol, you know, um, hand sanitizer, such as Purell or any of the others, that does not kill C. diff. Let me repeat that. Using a hand sanitizer does not kill C. diff. But washing with soap and water does, or bleach, or these wipes. I just want you to be able to know how to prevent the spread of C. diff. So finally, I want to plead with you to only use antibiotics when you need them. Let me give an example. A woman at work is pregnant with her first child and she got a very, very bad cold and it went into bronchitis. So she saw her doctor and the doctor gave her an antibiotic. And she came back to the office and I said, why did you get an antibiotic for bronchitis? That's ridiculous. And I showed her what it says on WebMD. And really, maybe it makes you feel a little better. It might help some of your other symptoms. But you do not need to take an antibiotic if you have acute bronchitis. And that's just one example how a doctor gives out uh, antibiotics when they shouldn't. And also maybe a patient is kind of like asking for something because they feel miserable. But they estimate the United States 50% of antibiotics prescribed are unnecessary. So watch it for you and your loved ones with antibiotic use. If you are on an antibiotic, carefully monitor to make sure you don't have those loose stools and are developing C. diff. If you have a relative in a nursing home or you yourself are in the hospital or a loved one is, look for the signs of C. diff. 
And again, always have bleach and maybe even this germicidal or sporicidal, I guess they're called, wipes available to help you combat spreading infection. All of that is very, very important. And I have to go to my brother's funeral on Wednesday. And I certainly don't want anyone else to have to go through that. It's an unnecessary death. Um, unfortunately, hospitals are a place where infections are. I always believe you don't go to the hospital unless you absolutely, absolutely have to because that's where every bad infection in the world seems to exist while that and in tropical areas. Anyway, I want you all to stay safe and now you've learned what C. diff is and I hope you or a family member never has to deal with it. This is Prepper Popori saying please subscribe, share the knowledge, and as always, thank you so much for your support.